Hey, even I'm surprised I got a bot. I got some vlog for today. I mean, it's okay. Anyway, I wanted to devote this one to cognitive dissonance, which is in psychology is the mental stress or discomfort experienced by an individual who holds two or more contradictory beliefs, ideas, or values at the same time, or is confronted by new information that conflicts with existing beliefs, ideas, or values. This theory from Leonard Feistinger, or Festinger focuses on how humans strive for international consistency, I'm sorry, internal consistency. When inconsistency, known as dissidence, is experienced, individuals tend to become psychologically uncomfortable and they are motivated to attempt to reduce this dissonance as well as actively avoiding situations and information which are likely to increase it. Um, Individuals can adjust their attitudes or actions in various ways. Adjustments result in one of three relationships between two cognitions or being a cognition and a behavior. Consonant relationship is when two cognitions slash actions that are consistent with one another, like not wanting to get intoxicated while out, and ordering water instead of alcohol. Irrelevant relationship or two cognitions or actions that are unrelated to one another such as not wanting to get intoxicated while out and then tying your shoes. Then there's the dissonant relationship, two cognitive, two cognitions or actions that are inconsistent with one another. For example, not wanting to get intoxicated while out then consuming six tequila shots. <laughs> Fill in your own choice of liquor. Now the magnitude of dissonance or the amount of dissonance produced by two conflicting cognitions or actions as well as the subsequent psychological distress depends on two factors. The importance of cognitions, such as the more elements that are personally valued, the greater the magnitude of the dissonant relationship will be, and the ratio of cognitions, the proportion of dissonance to consonant elements. The pressure to reduce cognitive dissonance is a function of the magnitude of said dissonance. In reducing cognitive dissonance theory is founded on the assumption that individuals seek consistency between their expectations and their reality. Because of this, people engage in a process called dissonance reduction to bring their cognitions and actions in line with one another. This creation of uniformly uniformity allows for a lessening of psychological tension and distress. Shoot. And to get some water. According to Fessinger, dissidence reduction can be achieved in four ways. In an example case, where a person has adopted the attitude that they will no longer eat high-fat foods, but is e eating a high-fat donut, the four methods of reduction would be change behavior or cognition. I will not eat this. Eat, you know, I will not eat any more of this donut. Justify behavior or cognition by changing the conflicting cognition. I'm allowed to cheat every once in a while. Justify behavior or cognition by adding new cognitions. I'll spend 30 extra minutes at the gym to work this off. Or ignore or deny any information that conflicts with existing beliefs. This donut is not high fat. Be right back with theory and research. Most of the research on cognitive dissonance takes the form of one of the four major paradigms. Important research um, generated by the theory has been concerned with the consequences of exposure to information inconsistent with a prior belief, what happens after individuals act in ways that are inconsistent with their prior attitudes, what happens after individuals make decisions, and the effects of effort expenditure. Researchers James Weisgert and Elliot Aronson theorized that those who have heavily invested in a position will go to greater, yeah, greater lengths to justify their position. In the belief disconfirmation paradigm, there's the induced compliance paradigm, there's the free choice paradigm, the effort justification paradigm. Some great examples I can 
could start off with the, or the fox and the grapes by Aesop. You know, when the fox fails to reach the grapes, he decides he does not want them after all, with ra rationalizing that they're just sour. Um, and that's often involved in reducing anxiety about cog conflicting co cognitions, according to the cognitive dissonance theory. There's other related phenomena when people seek to explain inexplicable feelings, minimize regret of irrevocable, irrevocable choices, just by behavior that opposes their views, align one's perceptions of a person with one's behavior towards that person, in order to the Ben Franklin effect, where um, that statesman's observation that the act of performing a favor for a rival leads to increased positive feelings towards that individual and there's, you know, reaffirming already, already held beliefs, you know, congenial, congeniality bias. Um, these, um, in addition to explaining certain counterintuitive human behavior, the theory of cognitive dissonance has practically, has practical applications in several fields of education, therapy, learning health and social behavior, marketing, social engineering, um, there are some challenges in alternative theories because while cognitive dissonance theory has been utilized in experiments and is generally, although not entirely, accepted by those in the psychology field, there are alternative theories that account for human attitudes and behaviors. So from Daryl Bam, there's the self-perception theory and uh, the balance theory known as POX theory by Fritz Heider, which well, it's, it's a bit, it's, a, it's almost like an algebra equation where U or P, another person is O, and an element is X. You know, if, if I'm P, someone I know named Kate is O, and Kate's cat is X, then I could have those three separate sentences of, I don't like Kate, Kate has a cat, I don't, if I don't like the cat as well. And there's some unbalanced states like where three three negatives or two positives and a negative. There's the uh, cost benefit analysis by Jules Depoit, the self discrepancy theory by E. Tory Higgins. There's adverse consequences versus inconsistency by Cooper and Fazio. The free choice paradigm criticism by Chan and colleagues. There's the action and our motivation based model by Harmon Jones. Of course, there's some neuroscience findings that suggest that the more the anterior cingulate cortex signals conflict, the more dissonant a person experiences and the more their attitudes may change. There's also modeling and neural networks. Um, yeah, neural network models of cognition have provided the necessary framework integrate the empirical research that um, that I'm done on con cognitive dissonance and attitudes into one model explanation of attitude formation and change. Various neural network models have been uh, developed to predict how cognitive dissonance will influence an individual's attitude and behavior. These include parallel constraint satisfaction processes, the, me the meta-cognitive model of attitudes such as MCM, adaptive connectionist model of cognitive dissonance, attitudes as constraint satisfaction model. Um, and I know um, somewhere out there is an explanation of how this very um, there is an origin on how where this um, began somewhere there. Somebody, yeah. 
Yeah, I guess Festinger first coined the phrase in 1957. Now there's there's still little understanding of its origin, both developmentally over the life course and evolutionarily as a product of human phylogenetic history. Um, to date, little research has investigated whether children or non-human primates experience and strive to produce dissidents in a welcome exception in the developmental literature. Well, er yeah, Aronson and Carl Smith in 1963 found that four-year-old children who obey an experiment mild warning not to play with an attractive toy later liked the toy less than did children who had obeyed an experiment experimenter's severe warning not to play with the toy. Well, that's 1963. Thank you. Louis C. Egan, Lauren Laurie R. Santos and Paul Bloom from Yale University for writing The Origins of Cognitive Dissonance as a research article for Psychological Science, Evidence from Children and Monkeys. I swear, there was something I had encountered here online on Wikipedia that had um, listed the origin of Cognitive dissonance. Shoot. I think it originated in France. Oh crap. Um. Okay, this might be it. Well, this is abstract, but in a study to find the origins of cognitive dissonance, preschoolers and capuchins were given a choice between two equally preferred alternatives, two different stickers and two different colored M&Ms, respectively. On the basis of previous research for adults, the choice was thought to cause dissonance because it conflicted with subjects' belief that the two options were equally valuable. We therefore expected subjects to change their attitude towards the unchosen alternative, deeming it less valuable. We then presented subjects with a choice between the unchosen option and an option that was originally as attractive as both options in the first choice. Both groups preferred the novel over the unchosen option in this experimental condition, but not in a controlled condition in which they did not take part in the first decision. These results provide the first evidence of decision rationalization in children and non-human primates. They suggest that the mechanisms underlying cognitive dissonance reduction in human adults may have originated both developmentally and evolutionarily earlier than previously thought. And this is, of course, in that same article that I mentioned. You're welcome, New Haven, Connecticut. I mean, thank you, New Haven. Uh, I don't know why I'm suddenly this salt kind of remind me of that Queens of the Stone Age song, The Lost Art of Keeping a Secret. Whatever you do, don't tell anyone. Whatever you do, don't tell. Hey, if you're experiencing cognitive dissonance, you know where to post your comments. <laughs>